And we know our government is eager to help Europe pivot away from Russian natural gas, but it's going to take our companies to make up the difference. I've got three of them for you tonight. I know you've asked them for me. I've mentioned them periodically. I've never put them together in one space. Two are pure plays on liquefied natural gas exports, a little dicier. And then one is a more diversified story, really perfect for home gamers who are worried about volatility. First and foremost, there's Chenier Energy. Yes, the aptly tickered LNG. We've talked about this company for years. This is the one that pioneered the liquefied natural gas export business. Chenier was originally a traditional oil and gas exploration company. But 14 years ago, they, gave up, they set up this huge liquefied natural gas terminal in Louisiana. Natural gas is very tricky if you want to transport it overseas. It's too bulky to move in its room temperature form, so you have to use cryogenic equipment to freeze it. Freeze it into a liquid that's much more compact. Now, originally, Chenier's LNG terminal was set up for natural gas imports because we were supposed to be running out of natural gas. But thanks to the shale boom, we got a domestic gas glut. So they converted it into an export terminal. Then in 2015, they built another LNG export terminal in Texas. Why haven't we been building these things all across America? Well, natural gas is very cheap in the U.S. when compared with Europe or Asia. So you'd think it'd be a no-brainer. But the problem is these export terminals are insanely expensive. They're gigantic. They take years to build. Shear lost money every year from 2008 through 2015 as they set all of this up. The company's former CEO, Sharif Sugi, by the way, was just on our show, was the mastermind behind the whole thing. We got, we, just to, I don't want to brag too much, but we had a moment the stock was eight, and we were all blown away by it and said this could be an unbelievable stock. Now, he ended up losing his job in late 2015 thanks to a push from an activist shareholder. Yes, Carl Icahn. And that's why so few companies have gotten one in, in the liquefied natural gas game. It's very tricky. Even if your business can hold on long enough to reach the promised land, the executives who decide to go this route might not be able to keep their jobs. In Chenier's case, they finally started exporting the first LNG cargoes two months after Suki got ousted, which we were very sad about. We wanted to go down there. But once their facilities began running, this company became a cash machine. Chenier's uh, revenues jumped from less than $300 million in 2015 to $1.3 billion in 2016, and then north of $5 billion in 2017. By 2018, it was a Fortune 500 company. While they took a hit from COVID, energy prices have come, now come back with a vengeance, which is how Chenier put up 70% revenue growth last year, with total revenue coming in at nearly $16 billion, as Sharif Suki said one day could happen. At the same time, their earnings have also grown rapidly. It's the safest pure play in the industry. At this point, Chenier's really hit its stride, and they're still expanding the, their export facilities in Louisiana and Texas. It's the, it's the proof of concept that all of that liquefied natural gas investment really did pay off. Unfortunately, the stock's had a huge run. It's up nearly 100% over the last 12 months. But even after this move, the stock is pretty cheap on an EBITDA basis. Why? Because the analysts expect Chenier's sales and earnings to peak this year. If you believe the LNG business can stay strong beyond 2022, then you've got my blessing to buy this one. But otherwise, it's possible the good news is already baked in, and we are in suddenly a not great stock market. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.